Good morning and welcome to St. Vincent de Paul Parish for our celebration of the Mass for the first Sunday of Advent. Before we begin, please take a moment and silence your cell phones. Our presider this morning is Father Rich. Please stand and greet one another as we begin the Mass. Our songs today are in the green book, but they're different numbers than the ones that are posted. The opening song is number 279, O Come Divine Messiah, 279. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, come into our lives, showing us this Advent mercy. I confess to Almighty God. 
to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, my fault, this baby is small. For I ask the Blessed Mary, the Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, mighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard from, from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye ever seen any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of, your, of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry, and we are as sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight, or at cockcrow or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. We are reminded as we begin this holy season of Advent, the twofold character of the season. First, we concentrate on the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ into our lives at the second coming of him, when he will judge the living and the deceased. The glory of God made known in the second coming, the glorious coming of the Lord Jesus at the end of times. 
The other coming that we focus on is that of Jesus' first coming into our world, into our planet Earth, some 2,000 years ago, when he was born, his nativity, and then the 30-some-odd years of his life that he shared when he was first with us that way. Those are the two dimensions, the twofold character of the comings of Jesus into our life. And it just so happens that the first 18 or so days of this holy season, beginning now, we turn our attention to that second coming of Christ, reflecting upon the teachings, the scriptures that give us insight into Jesus' future coming. And then the last nine days of the Advent season will turn our focus towards Jesus' already having come to the earth, preparing ourselves for the Christmas event and the Christmas season once again. So that being the case, our scriptures this year, liturgical year that is, are what we call cycle B letter B readings. You'll remember that just this past liturgical year, which concluded last Sunday, cycle A readings were highlighted with the Gospel of Mark, excuse me, the Gospel of Matthew. This liturgical year, this new one, cycle B readings, focus and highlight the attention to the Gospel of Mark. And to know the Gospel of Mark, which we'll get in touch with deeply during this year, is to know that it is the oldest of the four Gospels. It was written sometime 30, 35 years after Jesus' death and resurrection. So about the year 60, 61, 62, maybe even 63. In Rome, the evangelist Mark and his community of helpers in the proclamation of the gospel listened attentively to the stories of St. Peter regarding Jesus Christ. So Mark used the testimony of Peter, the bishop of Rome at that time, which is also, of course, the Pope, Peter, which he was, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ's life. Mark and his fellow community of believers used those words to have what we hear today in the Gospel of Mark. So it's, as I said, the oldest. And as a result, it's the shortest of the four Gospels, the fewest words in stark contrast to the Gospel of Matthew, which we just finished last Sunday, which is a plethora of words, many, many though there are. That's because Matthew, Luke, and in a sense the Gospel of John borrowed from St. Mark and used the stories that he first heard from St. Peter and, of course, inscribed for us today as a way of developing Jesus' life. So the other thing we can say about St. Mark's Gospel as being the oldest and the shortest is that it is probably the most purest. Not that the other three Gospels were in any sense inerrant or wrong in their proclamation of Jesus' life, but I guess the closer to the source in terms of years, the purer it may be. 16 chapters worth of the stories of Jesus' life. And today we hear from the 13th chapter a story of Jesus' giving some figurative and maybe even literal inferences to his second coming. And one word in particular is used with regard to that second coming of Jesus, and it's the word watch. And the watch that Jesus is talking about 
is twofold, once again, getting back to two dimensions. One can be out of fear, and you have to take the story into account. Jesus talking about the master of the compound who had left his servants in charge, and it's their sense of watching. And it's the sense of out of fear that they watch. So in other words, they haven't been minding the business of the compound too well. Things are out of hand. Things are not in order. And they dread the coming of the master of the compound back to his house because he's going to find things in disarray. And they know he's not going to be happy and satisfied with them. And so they watch dreadfully out of fear. The second kind of watch that the gospel is referring to is the total opposite. The servants of the compound of and of his house cannot wait for him to return. They love their master so much they've missed him, even if he's been away for a short time, but probably it's a longer time. And they are joyfully anticipating and eagerly expecting him to return. Imagine them with the gatekeeper at the entrance of the gate, looking out into the fields, saying to themselves, Where is he? May he come back soon. We miss him so. Those are the kind of watches that the gospel proclaims here from St. Mark today. So which watch is your focus during this Advent time? out of fear for the Lord's return or out of joyful expectation for the Lord's return. Let us rise to profess the faith of the church. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we begin our Advent with trust in God's love, and we present to Him our needs, and not only our own, but the needs of the entire world. For the Church, may the Lord look graciously upon us as we proclaim the gospel message. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may Christ strengthen their conviction as servant leaders for all people. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all who face hunger and mal malnutrition, may God grant them strength and provide the means for them to obtain their daily bread. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our family members and loved ones who struggle with mental illness, may God bring them healing and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Mary Jeanette Bleckley, Jim Suter, Shirley Bleckley, the mother of Vicki Hernig, and all our loved ones. May God bring them home to be with him forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord our God, hear the prayers of your people, granting them in accordance to your will, and through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A preparation song, 657, Sacred Silence, 657. Sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all in his church. Accept, we pray, Lord God, these offerings we make, gathered from among your many gifts, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below may gain for us the prize of our eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ the Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of our humanity, and he so fulfilled the designs you formed long ago, and he opened up for us the gateway to eternal salvation so that when he does come again in his glory and it all at last is made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. 
And so with the angels and archangels, with the thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we too sing the hymn of your glory as without end together we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the workings of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to the glory of your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit to graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we now offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. And grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her blessed spouse, Saint Joseph, 
with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Vincent de Paul, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for our unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Mitchell, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have summoned before you in your compassionate, most merciful Father, and gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world and to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all those who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance into your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Joining our Advent prayers of praise together as one, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
song is number 824, Christ Be Our Light, 824. Thank you. 
Let us pray. May these sacred mysteries, Lord God, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid these things that are passing, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and to hold firmly to that which will endure forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace.
glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. Number 288, ready the way. 288. Eight.